Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at single phase full wave control rectifier with RL load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram. In order to understand this operation of the circuit, let us consider the waveforms and parallelly see what happens during different cycles and it will be very easy for you to understand. We're going to look at supply voltage waveform, the gate pulse, V out voltage across the output and the current across the output I out and voltage across the resistor T1 and T2. One important observation here is that we are going to understand the operation of the circuit in continuous conduction mode. When I say continuous conduction mode, the output current will be continuous and it will never go to zero and that can be achieved through large value of inductor and small value of alpha by designing the inductor such that the output current can be made continuous that is by large value of L and small value of alpha. We are going to consider a sinusoidal voltage source Vs. Let us extrapolate these waveforms and let us understand what happens when we apply a gate pulse to thyristor T1 and T2 at say instant alpha. So T1 and T2 is triggered at instant say alpha over here. So during this instant what happens is that we will consider the circuit so the supply voltage is going in the positive and negative direction over here. Positive will be connected to anode of T1 and negative is connected to the cathode of T2. Because of this and firing pulse is applied at instant alpha, T1 and T2 will be acting as short circuit and T3 and T4 will act as open circuit. So the current starts flowing through this path, the current flows through this path, the current flows through the load in this direction and the current flows through this path. It returns to the source in this particular direction. Meanwhile, one important observation is that the output voltage is plus and minus because the current is flowing from upward to downward direction. So we have considered this as the convention. One important point here is the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus during positive half cycle. So what is the output voltage during this cycle? V out is equal to Vs because it is just acting a short circuit. The current is flowing through this path and there are no power consuming elements apart from the load in the network, isn't it? So whatever you're supplying will appear at the load terminal. So V out will be equal to Vs. So what is the output voltage waveform? So the output voltage waveform will start in this particular fashion. I will tell you the reason why it is starting from this point it is going in the negative I will explain that in detail as we go ahead but let us say when alpha is given at this instant we see that T1 and T2 is turned on as a result we are having V out is equal to Vs so V out will basically follow the supply voltage waveform so you will be getting a waveform which is similar to the supply voltage in this particular fashion this is because of T1 and T2 conduction and what happens to the current? Again, I will be explaining the dip, the reason for this dip as we go ahead. At this instant, what happens is that the inductor starts slowly charging. As a result, the current slowly starts to increase and it reaches a peak value over here. Now, when negative half cycle appears, that is when supply voltage goes negative, what happens is it becomes minus and plus. So we would have thought that T1 and T2 should be reversed biased in this case because negative half cycle has started, isn't it? But that is not the case that is happening. So what actually happens is according to the property of Lenz law, the inductor will reverse its polarity as minus and plus and it will ensure that the current still flows in the same direction. And as a result, T1 and T2 will still be acting as short circuit for some time and V out will be equal to Vs. So the current direction will be same as it was in the previous cycle. So we will be having the output voltage waveform like this. It is still following the supply voltage waveform. So it is in the negative direction over here. And this is because T1 and T2 is still conducting. That is T1 and T2 is still conducting and that is why we are getting this waveform over here. And that is why it started like this. I just wanted to explain that. So I hope why we are starting like this because there was previous cycles and that is why we are considering like that. So it is starting at this point and now when we are applying a gate pulse similarly the same thing happens to current why the current is decaying the current is decaying because the energy in the inductor is 
getting dissipated and it is discharged through resistor R and that is why it is dissipating and please note that the current is not going to zero and it is having some value based on the inductor that is chosen so that is never going to zero if you carefully observe. Now when we are applying a gate pulse to T3 and T4 what happens is that T3 and T4 will be turned on because plus is applied across the anode of T3 and minus is applied across the cathode of T4. These two will act as short circuit and this will act as open circuit. T2 also will act as open circuit. So the flow of current will be through this path. It will be through this path and it will be through this path. Again the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus and the flow of current will be through this path and it will be through this path and it will come back to the source. So again V out will be equal to Vs that is Vs in this case is again positive and you will be getting a positive output voltage over here meaning to say that the supply voltage will still have the same pattern of the waveform that we got in the previous cycle that is T3 and T4 is turned on and again when the supply voltage is in this positive direction that is it is in the opposite direction for T3 and T4 so what happens it will still continue to conduct because of the stored energy in the inductor as that was the case for T1 and T2 so it will still conduct because of T3 and T4 the same cycle repeats for the current waveforms and it continues to conduct because of T1 and T2 here and here T1 and T2 so this waveform repeats for n number of cycles and if you carefully observe both positive and negative cycles are completely controlled with the help of a fully controlled rectifier so full wave control rectifier controls both positive and negative half cycles to convert ac to dc as a result we call this as full wave control rectifiers now let's take a look at the voltage across thyristor t1 and t2 and i would suggest you to try it for t3 and t4 because it is opposite to t1 and t2 and that is why I'll only be showing T1 and T2. So it starts through this peak. So again, this peak, why it is starting like this, I will explain further. Now when T1 and T2 is turned on, the voltage across it will go to zero, isn't it? Because it is acting as short circuit. So it is going to zero until the instant when it is continuing to conduct, it will be in zero only. So T1 and T2 will stop conducting at this instant. And at only at that instant, you can see that the voltage across the thyristor will go and follow whatever is the supply voltage so it will follow whatever is the supply voltage the reason is because it is acting as reverse biased and when it is acting as reverse biased negative voltage will be applied across t1 and t2 as a result it is following the supply voltage waveform i hope this point is clear now again now again the cycle repeats so you're getting a peak like this and that is the reason why i would shown this is starting like this at this instant so this pattern actually follows this and when again t1 and t2 is turned turned on it will go to zero over here so this is how you need to understand and analyze the operation of a single phase full wave control rectifier now let us take a look at some of the important analysis that we need to take into consideration now let's take a look at the average output voltage so these are very very important to solve numericals and it is very important to understand how to derive them rather than remembering the expression so fundamentally by the definition of average output voltage v out is equal to 1 by total time period that is equal to 1 by pi in this case and the integral the average output voltage we are considering only with respect to pi because the cycle is repeating continuously isn't it so if you carefully observe here this is pi plus alpha and this is alpha so the average output voltage for one cycle is starting at this point and is ending at this point so the lower limit will be alpha and the upper limit is pi plus alpha and we have vm sin omega t into d omega t now can we write v out can we take vm outside and when we integrate this we will be having minus cos omega t from alpha to pi plus alpha now v out is equal to vm by pi into minus of cos of upper limit that is pi plus alpha minus of minus will be plus so you'll be having cos alpha for the lower limits so from the trigonometric functions we know that cos of pi plus alpha 
this particular term can be written as minus cos alpha so minus of minus will be plus cos alpha so plus and plus will get added up so we will be left out with v out is equal to 2 times vm by pi into cos alpha this is the average output voltage expression now let's take a look at the rms output voltage again we will be deriving an expression for this v out rms is given by fundamental definition square root of 1 by total time period that is pi and we have upper limit and lower limit that is alpha to pi plus alpha because this starts from alpha and it remains till pi plus alpha vm square sin square omega t into d omega t so v out rms is equal to square root of let us take vm square outside vm square by pi into alpha to pi plus alpha sin square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t isn't it so v out rms is equal to square root of vm square by pi into applying the integral that is 1 by 2 integral is omega t by 2 minus cos 2 omega t integral is sin 2 omega t whole divided by 4 applying chain rule you will be getting alpha to pi plus alpha v out rms is equal to square root of vm square by pi so omega t by 2 we can write pi plus alpha applying the upper limit whole divided by 2 minus sin of 2 times pi plus alpha that is 2 pi plus 2 alpha isn't it whole divided by 4 minus the lower limit of omega t by 2 is alpha by 2 minus of minus will be plus so we have sin to alpha by 4 now one important observation here sin of 2 pi plus theta can be written as sin theta so this can be written as sin of 2 pi plus 2 alpha can be written as sin 2 alpha so replacing that sin 2 alpha by 4 and sin 2 alpha by 4 minus and plus here will get cancelled out alpha by 2 plus alpha by 2 minus alpha by 2 will get cancelled out pi and pi will get cancelled out so we will be left out with v out rms is equal to vm by root 2 this is the rms value of output voltage for an rl load for a single phase fully controlled rectifier now what is the peak inverse voltage and circuit turn off time so if you carefully observe the maximum negative voltage that is appearing across thyristor t1 and t2 is minus vm isn't it so the peak inverse voltage by its definition is equal to minus vm but we will be considering the magnitude alone because definition says that peak inverse voltage is the maximum negative voltage that is appearing so that is why what is the circuit turn off time tc it is the time during which the thyristor are turned off so if you carefully observe this is 2 pi this duration and this is pi plus alpha isn't it we need to find out this so this can be obtained by subtracting 2 pi minus of pi plus alpha whole divided by omega so tc is equal to pi minus alpha by omega isn't it i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of a single phase full wave control rectifier with rl load in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you